so yeah, uh, we've highlighted RE as a monitor for clients in the past and have spoken with management about a year and a half ago while the stock was trading in the $1.05 range. Um, but like Ryan said, following our recent interview with RE's CEO in LA last week, I thought I would briefly discuss the stock on the podcast. So RE Royalties, RE on the TSX Venture, uh, currently trading at a price of $0.64. Cents has about a $27 million market cap and a yield of about 6.7%. Uh, so the company acquires revenue-based royalties from renewable energy generation facilities by providing a non-dilutive royalty financing solution to privately held and publicly traded renewable energy generation and development companies. So uh, their royalty portfolio currently has over 120 royalties with primary exposure to US and Canada but also has some exposure to Mexico and Chile as well. Now, just looking at some operational updates, um, on October 4th, so this is actually, I believe, the day that we actually spoke with, uh, with Bernard, the CEO, um, the company announced that they entered into a royalty-based financing agreement with Revolve Acquisition, uh, who is basically working on a project for wind, solar, and battery, where uh, RE will provide them 4 million Canadian uh, and receive about a 12% interest rate on that. On August 8th, uh, they entered into a royalty-based financing agreement with Butler Corporation for their solar battery, um, providing a US 3.2 million at a 12% interest rate and a 10-year royalty of 5% gross revenues. Now, the last deal that I'll just discuss here, the recent deal was on May 25th of 2023, they entered into a royalty agreement on 100 megawatts of output from a wind project located in Alberta. Uh, they didn't actually disclose or I didn't see who it was, um, where they know they're going to receive monthly royalty for a 12 month period of, uh, or sorry, 12 year period of approximately 132,000 uh, per annum. Now, um, on April 3rd, so for financing, where are they getting their funds? Uh, April 3rd of 2023, they closed their Series 3 green bond uh, for gross proceeds of about 16.4 million Canadian as well as 1.24 million US. Um, and they are paying a rate of about 9% on uh, this Series 3 green, green bonds, uh, where typically Bernard said that, you know, if they were just going to, uh, you know, have a corporate bond, typically they'd be paying about 14% interest. Uh, so clearly that is why they're going with the green bonds. And I just wanted to highlight this. This isn't recent, of course, but uh, the last time the company diluted shareholders was uh, June 15th of 2022. Um, and Bernard did note that this wasn't primarily due to, you know, needing capital, but just because a large fund wanted to take a position in the stock. And a few notes that I have here at the end, just from our conversation, uh, he noted that they are on track to do about six transactions this year. Uh, they have about 16 million in cash to deploy. So they're looking to add about 10 million in revenue with that cash. Uh, and they do not want to raise equity at these levels, but continue to be attracted to green bonds or issuing green bonds. Uh, and insider ownership is at about 25%. So of course, financially, uh, the business has performed well and why we originally pulled out the stock in our CDAR sweeps. Uh, as in the last quarter, revenue is up 290% year over year, but this is primarily due to a gain on a royalty buyback of 1.5 million. Uh, so if we, in, if we exclude this, revenue was still up over 100%. Now, looking at EPS, it also increased by 100% to two cents per share. But again, this was influenced by the large increase from the royalty buyback. Uh, and historically, we have seen the company jump in and out of accounting earnings, as you can see here uh, on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Now, the balance sheet appears reasonable with net debt to adjusted EBITDA of about four times. Um, and, and overall, I would say that the financials have been trending in the right direction. But we will be uh, booking another call with Bernard, the CEO, to get a little bit more clarity on a couple questions. Uh, number one, what percent of the finance income uh, that you're reporting is actually classified as royalties? As you can see here, they break out royalty revenue compared to finance income. Um, you know, so that finance income, there are, you know, normal loans in there that they would be extending as well. 
Now, management told us that the reason for the finance income versus the royalty income is because any fixed payments to RE through a royalty is included as finance income because of accounting standards. Uh, but we need to kind of dig into this a little bit further. And number two, our second question is how many of the royalties in the portfolio have a buyback provision? Um, as we've said on the podcast before, a tricky thing with some of these royalty companies is that the high quality royalties end up getting bought out while the more risky, less quality ones remain on the company's balance sheet. Uh, so a little bit more clarity, uh, or we want a little bit more clarity there. Um, so overall, at this time, we continue to monitor the stock and I will be booking that call with Bernard uh, and our team uh, to see if he can give us a little bit more clarity on the financials. Uh, and we will likely be including RE in one of our upcoming comprehensive reports for uh, small cap clients. Now, not necessarily as a buy, but certainly at least as, as a monitor, we are uh, intrigued by the business to say. And I'll open it up to you guys. Yeah, no, it was an interesting interview. I think you're muted, Aaron. I was just going to say, it'll be interesting to dig into this, uh, this company further. It's um it, it I mean if you just look at the financial performance face value there's been a pretty significant amount of growth so we have been following it for years it's been early stage um still is early stage but certainly would like to learn more about uh about the company and its future growth potential yeah you bet yeah and and generally speaking this is a general uh issue that we've had with some royalties in the past is um, some of the businesses essentially would invest in companies um, and you know take a royalty on a business and the best companies in their portfolio would have the option over time as they increase their cash flow, the better they did, they would buy out the royalty. So you were left with good companies buying out their royalties in some of these structures and the poor companies they'd either double down on or continue to invest in them. And you'd left with a weakening portfolio of companies over time. Um, now that doesn't happen into like a streaming royalty company in the uh, gold sector, for example, like they're not buying out those, those are basically perpetual royalties. Uh, but in this space, uh, outside of that segment, you've seen them be bought out. And over time, a lessening of the quality of the companies that are in that portfolio that you're getting royalties on. Now, I believe that comp this company is trying to address that type of concern, uh, but you know it's something that we have to be comfortable with looking five to ten to twenty years forward to see how this company builds its portfolio. Because ultimately, it it's only as good as the companies that it bases it has its royalties on. And if those companies are weak over time, this company does not do well, um, even if it looks good based on the current payments that they're getting, because those have to be sustainable payments over the long term. So that's just a general review of some of the things we've seen in royalty-based companies.